Ave Maria, and for any of our third order members, and because there might be third order members that are uh, participating in this with us, I hope you can even hear me. I wanted to say a couple of words, and also with our theme this month of Marian Consecration from our formation meeting. Uh, in the words of Holy Father St. Francis in one of the letters to the faithful, he talks about some stuff that I, I just thought I'd read a chapter from it. Uh, so we can reflect a little bit on uh, our Holy Father from CC. <clears throat> so this is a letter that he wrote to the faithful. His writings are always good and uh, holy things for us to reflect on and meditate on. It is not for us to be wise and calculating in this world's fashion. We should be guiltless, lowly, I'm sorry, we should be guileless, lowly, and pure. We should hold our lower nature in contempt as a source of shame to us. Because through our own fault, we are wretched and utterly corrupt. Nothing more than worms, as our Lord tells us by the prophet, I am a worm and not a man, the scorn of men despised by the people. Psalm 21, 7. We should not want to be in charge of others. We are to be servants and should be subject to every human creature for God's sake. And here I would mention, and this is something I'm trying to beat into everyone's heads and my own as well. Oftentimes, we do see ourselves at the center of everything. And so when anyone does anything against us, we find it to be a great affront against us. And we can't forgive them or it bothers us. It takes our peace away, showing that because it affects us, that is our contemptible nature. And it shows that we haven't really mortified ourselves so much. We can easily oftentimes fall into a, into a slump of thinking that we're actually making great progress and that other people should be really making kind of progress that we are. But in the end, once we start to have our flesh a little bit poked, when we start to actually feel like we really are wretched worms, then we start to cry out a little bit from frustration from the fact that we're not as holy as we actually thought we were. These are all signs that we have to put our nature into uh, we have to put it back into check. Like he says here, it is not for us to be wise, already knowing everything, being sure of all kinds of things, knowing that we're on the right path, that everyone else is wrong. That we, it is not right for us to be wise and calculating in this world. That is trying to sort out how not to have the difficulties of the world touch our flesh. to be in this world and uh, calculating the world's fashion, we should be guileless, lowly, pure, all the things that really happen to us and that it makes us upset because we're lowly and guileless. We should hold our lower nature in contempt. That is when it gets pricked and we feel frustrated and upset because we actually are lowly and not the holy bastions that we thought that we were. Then we get really upset and we turn our finger at God. It should be a source of our shame to us because through our own fault, we're wretched and utterly corrupt. Not like Luther says, but here because of our own fault, we're utterly, utterly corrupt. Not because of the workings of God. God made everything good. Nothing more than worms. Remember, Our Lady, and so many apparitions, especially in uh, Our Lady of uh, in Mary of Agreda, Our Lady would refer to herself as a, as a worm. She saw herself as not, because she, she knew she was a creature. We know that's not the case. But Our Lady was just humble in the fact that she understood her created nature. We should not want to be in charge of others. <clears throat> But you know we do want to be in charge of others, and the reason we want to be in charge of others because it stinks being told what to do, because you got your own mind and your own way of doing things. 
We should not want to be in charge of others. We are to be servants. Now out there in the world, how do you view the servants? But what, what we friars strive to do, what we learn in our formation, is that even our benefactors, we do whatever they tell us to do. As long as it's not sinful. Pick this up. Go over there. Do this. You just do it. Because you're low. We take a, we take a, we take a lower place. And this is what made St. Francis great. We're celebrating his feast today because he's great. St. Francis is great because he became nothing. We should not want to be in charge of others. Wives, how many wives want to boss their husbands around? And how many husbands listen to it because they're sick and tired of it? We should not want to be in charge of others. We are to be the servants and should be subject to every human creature for God's sake. That's from 1 Peter 2.13. For God's sake. On all others, oh, I'm sorry, on all those who do this and endure to the last, the Spirit of God rests. What a beautiful thing. Because it's endurance. It's difficult. We make a resolution. We keep the resolution for about a week or less. And then we just fall back into the other stuff. Who endures to the last. The Spirit of God rests. Because His grace is always sufficient. Even when St. Paul cried out. And it shows you how human he was. He didn't like this thing of the flesh that he had. And even when he cried out, God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. And that is how God's, God's spirit rests on us until the end. If we persevere. He will make his dwelling in them. And there he will stay. And they will be children of our father in heaven. Matthew 4, uh, 5, 45. Whose work they do. See that? If we persevere to the end, we cooperate with, the, with this, those graces that are constantly present to us from our good and loving God to see us through difficulty and even shame sometimes, the shame that the world gives us because we're a worm. That he will make his dwelling with us even here being children of our Father, and we will be doing His works. It's an incredible thing to think about. That we feel like we're doing nothing, God makes His work. That's why He likes to do, and St. Paul talks about it, He makes, uh, after that sting of the flesh, it's through weakness that uh, our Lord makes us strong. But that's so that we can't claim glory in the good that we do. Because we know that without grace, we would fail. It is they who are brides. See that? The ones that do this, the ones that stay, that find themselves to be lowly so they can place themselves at the service of God according to His grace and persevere to the very end, doing His work as children for their Father who is in heaven. It is they who are brides, the brothers and the mothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. A person is a bride, St. Francis says, when his faithful soul is united to Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. How is our soul united to Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit? If you cooperate with all the graces of the sacraments, especially your sacrament of baptism, but more so even of your confirmation. And we don't defile those graces through sin. We are his brothers when we do the will of his Father who is in heaven. But remember, our Lord even says, we love him when we do his will. And we are mothers, this is why I wanted to read it to you. And we are mothers to him when we enthrone him in our hearts and souls by, by love with a pure and sincere conscience 
and give birth to him. I'm sorry. And give him birth by doing good. This too should be an example to others. Beautiful words from St. Francis. And this last part, and even all of it really, has to do with the talk that we just gave you last, whenever that last talk was, the second Saturday uh, um, for September or October. September. On how to live our Marian consecration. In our Marian consecration, we're to be mothers. That is, making ourselves, disposing ourselves so that our Lady can give birth to Christ in others through us. And I read St. Francis' words again. And we are mothers to Him when we enthrone Him in our hearts and souls by love with a pure and sincere conscience and give birth and give Him birth by doing good, making him present in the world through the living of your, of your rule. Our rule in the first order, your rule in the third order. Being out in the world and being Christ out in the world and giving birth to Christ and other people because they, they come in contact with the good of Christ in you by the good that you do. And he says, this too should be an example to others. So as we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis, it's more than as the friars that we make a bit of cake and have rolls with sugar and stuff inside of them. We celebrate also in a material way, but the great celebration of St. Francis is to bring to mind what made St. Francis great. Why is he in every butterfly garden in the world? St. Francis is so great because St. Francis became the living Christ. St. Francis took the stigmata, received the stigmata in confirmation of arriving at Christian perfection. And we're all called to that. So when the difficulty befalls us, when the humiliations assail us, when we find ourselves a failure again, when we're asked for one more hardship or trial or penance or difficulty, or calumny, or, or, be, or, or being abandoned by another child from the family, or another friend from your past life, or whatever it is, in all of this we find ourselves conforming ourselves to, to Holy Father St. Francis, so that we can do what we were commanded to do, pick up our cross, and to follow him until the end, perseveringly to the end, thus making ourselves his brother, uh, his bride, his brother, and his mother. These are the words that St. Francis gives us. So let us rejoice in this beautiful feast of Holy Father St. Francis for this, um, for this year and use it as a, as a reminder to, to kind of redirect us to more fervently seek to be the worm that he speaks of so that we can be at the service of God, cooperating with his grace, to the very end, expecting only heaven.